Today's call is being recorded. Thank you. You may begin. Armland Protection Policy Act, FPPA. Today we're going to spend a few moments talking about the SA part of the LISA, which is Land Evaluation Site Assessment. And we're going to explain how you uh, fill out the uh, forms uh, AD 1006, Permanent Conversion Impact Rating, and the form NRCS CPA 106, from that conversion impact rating for quarter type projects. As you can see on the screen, LISA, Land Evaluation Site Assessment, has two parts. It has the Land Evaluation part and the Site Assessment part. There's a separate module to describe how to complete the Land Evaluation LE part but this afternoon we're going to go ahead and continue uh, with explaining how you uh, complete the uh, forms for the site assessment. And you can see that uh, we have uh, on the screen here Lisa, and uh, we're going to proceed now to describe how we do it. Okay, site assessment, SA part of the land evaluation site assessment has two parts. The site assessment part, of course, is the overall of the land evaluation site assessment, which non-solved factors affecting the site's relative importance for agricultural use. The SA factor consists of three kinds. The first is the SA-1, which is the non-soil characteristics. Remember the LE part took care of the soil characteristics, where the SA takes care of the non-soil characteristics. The factors measure non-soil site characteristics related to potential agricultural activity and farming practices. The second part of SA, development pressure, factors measures development or conversion pressures on a site. And we'll go and discuss that, but one of those would be, for example, whether or not you have, have water available uh, so that you won't have to have wells. The third one of the SA part, is historic, scenic, or environmental values, factors, measure, or other public values of a site such as historic, cultural, scenic, or environmental values. Now, we're going to take just a moment and maybe um, take a side step here just a moment. Um, normally, the SA part, uh, local people are put on the SA committee, and they need to select the, the uh, factors reflecting the purpose for which the lease system is best suited for their jurisdiction. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a moment, look again at the three uh, items for SA. And let's talk about the non-soil site factors first. Okay, as it would indicate, if they're non-soil, then of course that would exclude the LE properties. But some of the things that we might want to consider or the committee who develops the uh, SA part of this might want to consider the site, oh, I'm sorry, the size of the site. This is important, particularly in farming, because you can get to the place where the unit that you're trying to farm is smaller than what really is farmable. Another one is compatibility of adjacent uses. This is important because sometimes, you know, you can put together uh, things close that are, would not be suitable, at least for neither one of the uh, two people, the farmer nor the non-farm people. And the other one is compatibility of shrine areas. That is, uh, if you live in an area and you have to travel through an area that's, that's uh, quite uh, highly urbanized, then sometimes uh, you interfere with traffic as you're trying to go from field to field. And then again, as a percent of the site and agricultural use, you can get the place where agriculture comes uh, very minute as far as the overall use of that particular area. A percent of the percent of the site feasible to farm. Uh, that's the thing we have to also consider. Another thing is the level of the farm investment. Sometimes that uh, you may want to find out that you have such great investments that if you converted that, the chances are that these farms would not exist. Availability of agriculture support services. That is, do you have the fertilizer 
uh, dealers or the machinery dealers that uh, will support agriculture. And then there's just plain stewardship of the site. And then the environmental limitations, agricultural practices. Another one that's very important in the West is the availability and reliability of irrigation water. And goes along with just the opposite of this. In the East, of course, we have to drain our soils many times or we can't farm them. So both irrigation and drainage are important if you're going to have agriculture. And this is a place, if you want to protect those two, this is the place you would do that. Development pressures in an area. And these are the pressures that um, would cause an area to, to go from farming to non-agricultural uses. And uh, one of them is land use policy designation. Another one is the percent of shrine land in urban area development use. That is, if most areas developed, it's probably maybe not be feasible anymore to try to farm in that particular area. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, the distance to public water or public sewer makes a big difference particularly if it's already in place and uh, it's a high investment, therefore the probably will go urban. And then this is the urban feeder highway. We all know that um, usually if you're going to be able to travel from a rural area into work into a city area, you need roads and things like this. So if you have good feeder roads, the chances are this will be under uh, a situation where people will want to move out that area because they can get back and forth to job and home and still live in the rural area. Another one is the length of public road frontage. Uh, and this we will discuss a little more later, but one of the things we might want to consider is the fact that uh, if you take the frontage, a lot of times then it's difficult to farm the area behind those roads. And this is an urban center. Uh, even though people live in the urban area, and move to the rural area, they still like to get back to the urban area. So uh, the distance makes a difference. Proximity to protected farmland. Uh, sometimes the um, jurisdiction has rules that only certain things can be uh, in a certain part of their jurisdiction. And uh, that way, if you infringe on that, then you have a chance of changing the land use. The last and third factor is uh, the historic or aesthetic environmental values. And this is where that uh, it's uh, one of these things where people expect certain things in their living area. And uh, one is educational value of a site. Another is open space uh, value of a site, like an urban green belt. Many of the new uh, areas being developed have uh, uh, areas where they can walk, or where they can do certain things and uh, still feel like maybe they're not still in the city. Hist historic buildings or sites, site of significant artifacts or relics, wetlands. This is something that seems very important. People like to see uh, wildlife, and of course wetlands always encourage wildlife. Scenic value and other rural amenities. These are things that, uh, that just add to the uh, importance of, for some people's uh, living conditions. Wildlife habitat, environmental sensitive areas, and floodplain protection. These are the items that uh, will affect whether or not property may or may not go from farming to non-agricultural. Okay, we're going to talk about the two forms. This is one of the forms we're talk about. This is the farmland conversion impact rating. And I refer to it as the Form 1006. It's actually Form AD 1006. And at the same time, it has many different phrases that refers to it. Uh, for this particular discussion, I am going to refer to it as non-quarter. The reason I'm going to do this is that we have a form that we call the 106, which is the quarter form. And it's easier if I use those terms consistently. So this is the non-quarter and uh, also sometimes called site. And it's the one that is not linear. The, uh, the quarter one is linear, either roads or, or railroads or something like that, bike paths or bike trails. These will all be linear, whereas this would be nonlinear or non-corridor. And uh, 
if we move the uh, slide to the bottom, I'll, I'm going to talk about something early because I, if I don't, we might not have a chance to visit about it because I'll forget. Uh, the form has a part seven. And since we want to compare one track with another track, we want to have the same weight. And the uh, weighting for the uh, two, for the LE and for the SA, for the LE it's 100 points, for the SA it's 160 points. And so if you're working with, I'll talk more about this later, but we also encourage that we have local lease systems. Well, it had a local lease system, meaning they also have a separate numerical system for rating. So what I want to talk about, I have highlighted here, we want to come down to a common denominator, which means the fact that if they have a different numerical system for a local lease system, particularly the SA part, then we want to ratio this so we have the same weighting based on a point of 160. The way you do that is if the, if the local jurisdiction has a possible 200 points, then all you do is take the number they do come up with for a rating, divide that, and multiply by the points that we have for 160, and that gives you the value that you, will, you want to put on uh, this item 7 uh, for the total points for the SA. Okay, the next form we're going to talk about is something that I want to uh, cover here. Uh, I thought it might be well for you people, you may never fill out an LE, but I thought maybe you'd like to have appreciation of the part of the form that is the part for LE. The parts for LE would be parts two, four, I'm sorry, parts two, four, and five. Uh, they have uh, numbers with red uh, shaded circles and uh, if you want to know more about this, we have another module that will help you do that. But right now we're going to talk about part one and part uh, three and also part six. I'm going to summarize parts one and three because that's also included in more detail on the LE module. <clears throat> but for this to even start, the agency, the other federal agency, need to fill out part one. <clears throat> And then this initiates this being sent to our agency. At that same time, they need to send along some type of a map delineating the area that they want considered for conversion uh, to, a, to an agricultural use, a, a not, not an agricultural use. <clears throat> and uh, so they will do that. And then you notice in part two, we have the choice of either determining if there's important farmland or not by checking yes or no. If we check yes, then we will complete parts two, four, and five, and then we will send it back to the other federal agency, and then this is where part six is completed by the other federal agency. And this module is to help them understand how they need to fill it out. <clears throat> so let's look at part six on this module. And uh, I can tell you the difference between a Form 1006 and a Form 106. The, uh, the 1006, the non-quarter, if you look under Part 6 on this form, you see there's 12 items that you will consider when doing the SA part. In a few moments, you're going to see the Form 106, the quarter, and because it's linear, it only has 10 items to consider when completing the SA part. Now we're going to uh, actually go to the information that we will consider when we're completing uh, these particular forms. Okay, let me tell you what we have here. Uh, this is called the Code of Federal Regulation and this is more or less the rules and regulations that are followed when we do complete the Form 1006 or the 106. And so if you move the uh, down to the first item, well, I'm not going to cover this. I'll let you read the whole thing you want to, but I'm going to cover items that I think might be important for the SA completion of the, on the forms. The site assessment criteria. 
measure agencies are to use the following criteria to assess the suitability of each proposed site or design alternative for protection of farmland along with the score from the land evaluations criteria that's on the same CFR except in Part A, 658.5A. Okay. So if you look down to the next part highlighted with the blue arrow, you see this is it says the site criteria are. And you're going to find, you're going to see here 12 criteria. They're the same ones that are listed on the 1006 that we looked at prior to looking at this slide. And uh, later on, we're going a little more detail on this. But uh, what it is, is it tells you a little bit about uh, what each one is and also gives you the suggested scoring of this. So let's go to the next item here. And what I've already told you is the fact that if you have a quarter type site assessment, then you would use only 10, not 12, of the sites that you do for nine quarter. And the ones they will exclude is uh, five and six will not be considered. And then when you use the quarter, then you will have more points added to the other two to come up still with 160 points. Okay, this is, this is what I call the more detailed non-quarter criteria. If you look at the Code of Federal Regulations, it uh, has the same information except the fact some people add, want more breakdowns than what is allowed there. And this is all this does. It, uh, it uh, can be used in place or can use be in conjunction, I should say, with the CFR. So if you uh, go to the very first one there, it, uh, it says how much land is in non-urban use within a radius of one mile from where the project is intended. And then it gives you some idea that, that what's, uh, what could be. And then it goes down and actually gives you examples of what these factor or what this factor is designed to evaluate. And uh, and then you go on down a little further. I don't plan to read this if you don't mind. I think that probably most of you can probably read this yourself. Uh, but the next one down, if you compare this, there are more breakdowns. So if you want to have more values assigned, uh, you can. And uh, basically, that's what this is. The second one is, again, the, uh, the perimeter or the side borders on land and non-urban use. And it's the same thing again. It gives you the explanation of how to do this. And uh, then you just assign the points as are appropriate. It's rather straightforward. This is this is probably easier than uh, uh, the, than the LE part, which takes a little more time. So I'm just going to go through this slowly and uh, give you some idea of uh, what your chances are of doing this. And I may stop at one or two that I think of, I'm, uh, I'll make comments on. So if you start moving through this, I'd appreciate it. Let's, uh, let's stop here just a moment on number four. Uh, is the site subject to state or unit local government policies or programs to protect farmland or covered by private programs to protect farmland? <clears throat> and this, this covers such things as uh, does the state have a, 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 a agricultural assessment uh, that helps uh, protect agricultural land? And uh, this is uh, in the assessment part of this. If this is the case, if you notice up there, you have a choice. It's either 0 or 20. So you either have some regulation or law in the state uh, or you don't. And uh, so you want to be sure that you check with the state and also with the uh, local uh, or with your local jurisdiction to see if you qualify. Because if they have any one of those, then they get 20 points. Okay, this is what we talked about earlier about how close to the site is the urban build-up area. Uh, as, as we said earlier, the, the closer you get, probably the uh, 
the less points it does get, and therefore it means the fact that it has more chance of being converted over to a non-agricultural use. Same thing is true of water and sewer lines. We talked about this. Uh, uh, they're expensive to install, so if they're there, they're probably going to be utilized. Okay, uh, this is this is what I was telling you about earlier when we looked at 1006 is does the site have available adequate supply of farm support services and markets, farm suppliers, equipment dealers, processing, storage facilities, and uh, if you go to some areas uh, that uh, have little or no agricultural land, they've lost all this support. And uh, they may have to drive quite a distance to get some. So therefore, it's important when you're planning uh, uh, to be sure that if you intend to have agriculture that you uh, consider this item. OK. Uh, farming is a, a business like any other business. It uh, takes money. And if you have a substantial or well-maintained farm investment, uh, like equipment, and you've uh, got your buildings, and you have uh, conservation majors. It's very easy to get uh, a large amount of money invested, and uh, therefore, probably, uh, uh, if you have that kind of investment, you may want to consider this being uh, given more points. And this is what we've done here, because it's not easy to uh, start over again. It takes a lot of time and effort to get these particular conservation practices established. And uh, these are things that need to be considered. Let's go to the next one. OK. So this gives you a kind of a flavor of what this is. Like I said, it's just a matter of taking each one of these, reading the information, and then taking your situation, and then deciding which the appropriate point to assign for that. Okay, uh, I've also included here again just to show you that the corridor uh, does have uh, less points, or I'm sorry, less a number of items. So we go to the bottom, you're going to see there's only 10 here. And uh, so, but you can use, if you want to, you can use the uh, non corridor if you want more breakdown. You can use a non corridor because uh, they will work as well. Okay, what, uh, well, what this is, is this is the, uh, going down to the uh, to part seven, okay. Uh, this is one filled out just to give you some idea uh, of how you might score, score it. And uh, you see you actually end up with some zeros. In this particular situation, uh, number item four, uh, it was a zero because they didn't have anything to, to help protect uh, farmland. And therefore, it got a zero. Uh, same way with distance from supported urban services, uh, it got a zero. So this, it's not uncommon to uh, to go from the max uh, to a zero, depending on the situation. And, and only the person that's on site will know this because uh, they have the uh, criteria and they know the uh, the actual site and how far these things are away from the actual site being considered for conversion. And this is again attached to this. And again, I, I didn't highlight it this time, but remember the fact that we need to probably convert if it's not the same as our criteria, which is 100. By ours, I mean the uh, CFR's uh, criteria of 100 points for LE and 160 points for the SA. OK, here is the uh, form. Uh, the uh, CPA 106, and uh, I'll just 
add this. If you looked at the uh, parts two, four, and five again, you're going to find out that the same for the 1006 and the 106. And basically, the only difference in the two forms is again, you look the uh, part six has 10 items for the 10 for the 106, and has 12 for the 106. And uh, it's only because of the shape of the area being converted. One's linear and one's nonlinear, or we call them quarter versus non quarter. Okay, I've uh, I've added this here. Uh, this is uh, some information that was put together and that uh, might be of help to you. Uh, that deals mostly with NRCS as an agency, although if it's helpful, you're welcome to consider it. Uh, so if we go on down to the... Uh, back up just a little bit. We'll go back to the one that's... Uh, yeah, uh, let's go back to C. Use of criteria for assessing actions that are covered by Department Regulation 9503 or by FDPA. Um, if we have to do one within our agency, and this is then we will, under certain situations, we have to also do the uh, uh, SA part. We will complete it, uh, use the same uh, criteria and come up with the uh, weighting and to decide whether or not it should be uh, converted. So go on down. Keep going. Further. No further, I guess. Maybe I didn't highlight that. Keep going. I thought I highlighted something here, but I guess I didn't. I'll stop right here. Okay. I forgot to highlight this. I apologize. Uh, this is under rationale for selection of an alternative, and this, these are suggestions. If you look under the uh, uh, highlighted Roman numeral six, you see an A, and uh, these are the criteria that we more or less follow for our agency, which is NRCS. For a site-specific project where the total points according to land evaluation site assessment uh, is less than 160 points, or less, then we, we consider that not the value too low to be significant and uh, no other alternatives are needed. When the points, when the total points are between 160 and 220, we suggest at least two other alternatives to be evaluated and one of the, and the one with the lowest number of points selected unless there's other overriding considerations. Okay, let's go to B. Uh, when you have point total of more than, uh, greater than 220 points of a possible 260 now, for specific site projects, three or other alternatives should be evaluated in the lowest point total selection, selected unless otherwise overriding factors considerations. So this gives you some idea of the other alternatives. If you, if you go back and look at that, you know, the uh, both forms uh, have columns that you can have other selections. And uh, we would like to think that if you had a, a soil that was a good source for farming and uh, probably should not be uh, converted, uh, let's take a little bit of time and see maybe we can find some other sites that may not be quite as good as that one. And uh, these are the points that we suggest or the guidelines we suggest uh, for our people to follow. Okay, next slide. Okay, the next slide is sort of some more text, which I think that might be interesting. This is a CFR 658.4 uh, guides for use of criteria. And if we go down, we should have something highlighted. Okay. Uh, I, might, uh, I might point out uh, to you, I'm not sure in this discussion I've got this highlighted, but let me uh, just a moment add this. Uh, if you're another agency and you send us a... Uh, a 1006 or 106, uh, we have 10 days, according to CFR, to reply to you uh, the information that you requested. 
if we have to do something besides just office work to complete that, uh, then we uh, like go to the field or do something that uh, uh, we would have to do that would take more time. Uh, then we were then we have 30 days to reply uh, to a 1006 or a 106. Okay, coming back to the topic, it's highlighted here. After the agency receives the NRCS, the score of the site's relative value is described in Section 658.4 and then applies the site assessment criteria, which are set forth in 658.5b and c. The agency will assign the site combined score of up to 260 points, composed of the 100 points for the relative value up to 160 points for the site assessment. With this score, the agency will be able to identify the effect of its purpose on farmland and make a determination as to suitability of the site for protection as farmland. Once this score is computed, USDA recommends. Sites with, a, with, a, with the highest combined score be regarded as the most suitable for protection under these criteria and sites with the lowest score as least desirable. The reason I want you to know this is that this is not something that uh, that was done by our agency. This was done uh, at the Code of Federal Regulations level, and that uh, this is suggested that all agencies uh, consider doing this. Sites receiving a total of less than 160 points need not be given further consideration for protection, and no additional sites need to be evaluated. I read this to you because of the fact that um, and this is sort of, uh, I guess, my concern. I will have people say that, well, this doesn't seem like it's a good farm, farming area or something like this. Uh, I don't know how they will know what the points are if they don't do the 1006 or the 106. So I'm suggesting the fact that uh, it really doesn't take that much time now since we uh, have the uh, WebSaw survey. And those who haven't seen the WebSaw survey, I suggest you go on to our uh, website and uh, uh, get, look down until you find the word soils. Go over there and it's going to tell you on the left-hand column. It's going to have web soil survey. Click on that. There's all the information that you will need or that we will need to do a 1006. And so I think that, uh, and it doesn't take that long to do. And then if you end up with less than 160 points, uh, then you don't have to do anything else. You're done. And so I, uh, I suggest that, uh, that, uh, that we do a 1006, and that way there will be no questions later whether or not uh, it was or was not a site that might should have been uh, considered uh, not being converted to a non-agricultural to, to, yeah, to non use. Okay, next one. Okay, number three. Federal agencies may elect to assign the site assessment criteria relative weighting other than those shown in 658.5 and C. If an agency elects to do so, USDA recommends that the agency adapt its alternative weighting system, one, through rulemaking in consultation with USDA. What that means is you're going to put it in the Federal Register. You're going to go through the steps like we did here with this CFR. That's where it finally ended up at, as a CFR. Rulemaking means you have to go through that step which we encourage you to do if you so wish. Two, has, has the system be used uniformly throughout the agency? That is, once you have a system, it's going to be used no matter where you do any conversion or possible conversion of important farmland to non-agricultural uses. And US, the USDA recommends that the weighting stated in 658B and C be used until the agency issues the final rule to change the weighting. And if you've been in the system of rulemaking, you know that one of the, at the end when you put out the final document that's all been signed off on, it actually says final rule. Okay, number four. Numerous states and units of local government are developing and adapting the line evaluation of site assessment systems to evaluate the productivity of agricultural land and their suitability for conversion to non-agricultural use. I've mentioned that throughout my talk, that there are more and more local jurisdictions who want more say over how the criteria is written and how the points are assigned. And we probably should follow this, and that's all this says.
Therefore, the state and local units of government may have already performed the evaluation using criteria similar to those contained in this rule. And what we also say there is that we encourage all federal agencies, if there's a local local lease system, that they use it. Number five, and this is one that is in the rules and regulation that was uh, there at the, from the very beginning of this FPPA. To meet the re reporting requirements of Section 1546 of the Act, which is the law, 7 U.S.C. 4207, and for data collection purposes, after the other federal agency, I'm sorry, I should have, after the, other, after the agency has made a final decision on the project in which one or more of the alternative sites contain farmland subject to FPPA, the agency is requested to return a copy of the form AD 1006, and it should also say or, one, or the 106, which indicates the final decision of the agency to the NRCS field office. At the end of the year, we take all of those, we summarize them, and we have no choice. We have to submit this to Congress. Uh, this is in the law, this is in the act, this is in the CFR. And so we would very much appreciate this so that when we send it, we know that Congress is getting good information of what happened during that past year. In closing, I've enjoyed making this presentation. I'm sure you can tell by my enthusiasm that I think this is something important if we're going to have our very best farmland uh, remain in farming and also the fact we're, we all enjoy the amount of food we do get off that fine land. So uh, in closing, I would say that it was my uh, appreciation that you took time to listen to this and if you need any help, either contact our local office in your jurisdiction or our state office, and they will be happy to give you all the help you need. Thank you.